yesterday we had a local offer to take us to um, like another like lookout point that's here in Kanashel that we didn't know about. So uh, we got his number, we sent him a text, and now it's the next day he's gonna pick us up, and uh, we'll check out this lookout. But we have zero idea of what to expect. Like this was just like a local's recommendation. This is not in any tour book. This is an online, you know. Um, so um, it'll be an adventure. And man, what an adventure it turned out to be. We just didn't know it yet. Meet Alex, our tuk-tuk driver for the day. Once he arrived, we hopped in and we started our journey. The drive wasn't very far, but it was so nice to see other parts of Panahashel. So we can have these experiences, you know? Even before we got onto the tuk-tuk, this Mayan lady was, you know, selling her wares. We said no thank you, but then she ended up sitting down and talking to us and telling her story. And it was it was actually a kind of a sad story, you know? Uh, she was saying she was pregnant, and she's pregnant, and she's right now, she's about nine years old, and so she's, she's doing well, but she, you know, she's, she's making ends meet. So it was, it was really nice to be able to hear the story of a local and like how, how people are faring, how people are doing, you know? The, the ability to be, speak the language of the country and just opens up so many more doors and, and creates empathy. Um, I think it's um, I think it's beautiful and it's really pushed me to practice my Spanish and uh, if not, come back and learn it fluently, you know? Santa Catarina was the cultural center. It's free to enter and it's full of facts on Guatemala and the Mayan culture. Even though our guide only spoke Spanish, there were signs in English. She explained the traditional clothing and the colors that it symbolizes, like yellow for sunshine and dark colors for dark times, as well as the symbolism of marriage back in the day, where the men would wear a piece of cloth around their hat to signify they were married and women would wear necklaces. We then went upstairs and got our Mayan horoscopes read. Ik, ik, ik. Sinawales, ik, colibri. Your colibri. What's that? You'll see. Colibri, colibri. Colibri, viento, aliento, espíritu, luna, piedra sagrada. Fuerza física, son soñadores, son comerciantes, son viajeros, pueden ser filósofos, investigadores, meteorólogos. I only understood the beginning of that. Oh, wait till you see that. You have, ima you have imagination. You're very strong physically. You're always dreaming. You are um, always wants to sell. You know how you do oh your thing. Oh my gosh. And they travel. Wow, that's crazy. Once we were done, we said our thank yous and gave a small donation before leaving. So this this 
place has got a ton of surprises. It's like a smaller town outside of Pana, but you know, the culture here is so much more rich and all the buildings are the same color and it's so much smaller and intimate. And right now, uh, we're he's taking us to where some hot springs are, some natural hot springs. Uh, we did bring our bathing suit, so we're not gonna go swimming or anything, but I never would have known they were here. Sure, we can go touch the water. Are you gonna stick your feet in? Oh, we didn't even bring the towel. It's like uh, it's warm, but it's not. Hot, hot. No, it's not hot. hot. But it's really nice. See? No, it's actually. in Santa Catarina and now we're gonna head over to the next town over San Antonio where I think we're gonna find a bit of food there's a ceramic place he's gonna take us to as well as he there was one more thing he was gonna take us to wasn't there yeah, the oh yeah the women that, that do the laundry yeah using the lake um, so as, as is, uh, truly a cultural experience I'm so upset right now because my drone it died like I swear I thought I charged my drone and I thought I charged all my camera batteries out not only two of my three camera batteries dead my drone pretty much dead I used it all up on the, the, the overlook over there as we drove my mom and Alex talked and he was able to tell us interesting facts about the surrounding towns and Guatemala in general I'm on a trip. So you gotta understand, we just we just followed our local guide here to some place where they create like the ceramics. Um, it's Sunday, so no one's working. Like this is not a tourist trap. This is not a tourist place. You know, like I just I find it to be. It's so fascinating that it's so authentic that we, we, you know, we get to get off the beaten path and actually see how people live their lives. Uh, right now we're going to go see some of the finished products. So this is where they make all the ceramics and now he's got uh, the storage locker over here which has all the finished products. Obviously these go out to all the touristy places in town, right? Or like the shops in town? And so do they, do they buy it in like bulk yeah, and then they, they sell it in there? After visiting the local ceramic artist, we headed down to the water to see how the women washed their clothes. No one was there when we arrived, and it was very windy, but still interesting. Alex was telling us the city would fill the basin with water, and the women would scoop the water from the basin into the individual sinks, and that's how they washed their clothes. Before turning back, Alex proposed visiting a second lookout. Of course, my mom and I agreed right away. Now, Alex wasn't exactly sure which way to go. But we took a chance and set out. I always get so worried they're never going to make it up these hills.
in a tuk tuk. We can see the top. We can see the top. We have not had to walk yet, but I'm telling you, the poor engine on this thing is it's taking a beating. All I can say is I appreciate the faith Alex has in our tuk tuk. So much faith that he's on his phone while we're going up the hill. That's bravery. One extremely steep, bumpy ride later, we reached the pavement, but no lookout. Man, so we, we made it to like a, a main road, and I'm pretty sure this is one of the roads that the buses came on, and it's so beautiful to see. First we were like going up this cliffside, going up and up and up, and had these beautiful stellar vistas of the, of the lake and the volcanoes, and now we're on the other side, and it's just plateaus and farmland. context of like what we drove I can see the road that we were driving up all the way to get here and the best part is like uh, Alex our tuk tuk driver he's never been here either so this is uh, something that we all got to like explore and experience for a first time together so it's just it's made it just that much more special and I I, I wish I had the job and this would have been the perfect place it is phenomenal <laughs> oh my gosh and it's such a perfect day too this is the lookout that we wanted to come to to begin with. Uh, we thought that the road we were going on was actually going to connect right here. However, that's not what happened, but that's that's not the point. You know, uh, it was all about the adventure and we had a great time anyway, but it's nice to actually like, we came to the place that we were aiming to go for. Um, and the view is, 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 again, spectacular. So this is the road that we went. And this is the road that we thought we were on. We had so much fun. It was so much fun. This meter road or lookout was five kitsalis per person. And while the view was spectacular, I found myself feeling almost disappointed. I felt the journey was so much more fulfilling than reaching the top. We better get back to the hotel, but this, this is why I travel. They stay, and what happened is the reason I travel. I took it as the classic cliche reminder that the journey is just as important as the destination, if not more important. And it's not to be something that just passes you by.